So in the previous video, uh, I'd used uh, we asked, we had worked out the value of uh, a set of Greeks uh, using VBA. So let's go to that file for a moment. And when you go to the file, uh, when you use the link, uh, the issue then arises in terms of uh, operationalizing the functions. These are VBA functions and in the OneDrive when you open the Excel spreadsheet it doesn't uh, give you the value so best thing you can do is just download and then open that file. Try again and enable editing enable content and the values appear. Now if we use more values that we've been using from the beginning, so uh, one year maturity, risk fee rate 0 0.05, 0 for 0 0.05, 0 for uh, dividend yield, it might change this to Q to be consistent with other Valuations and the volatility or sigma 0 0.2. Okay, what we can see here is that the value of the call is 1045, and that's a relatively familiar value. Okay, and then we have this delta, gamma, vega, theta, and rho. Okay, so we initially had the John C. Hull values, uh, his worked example, we used VBA. Uh, code that's here and we have a set of functions that are consistent with the um, with the Black Scholes Greeks the functions of the formula are consistent with the formula set out here on Wikipedia and when we work through the values of the op of the Greeks they were consistent with uh, John C. Hull and now we've changed the values and we want to offer some kind of interpretation of the results, results that we had we have got. So we have values here for a call and delta, gamma, vega, theta and rho and uh, okay how do we interpret the delta what does it mean? So well we could l compare call against delta values for a range of different asset prices so we could do something similar to what we had done before. We could set up a data table and go down to 200. Okay, and um, we could set out, okay, what's the call value? The call value is equal to this value here. And the delta value, consistent with these parameter inputs, is equal to this tell a uh, delta estimation here and what I'd like to do is run uh, both estimations for a range of different asset values so we just set out the, the a data table but in this instance it's a little bit special because now we're considering two uh, estimations we're rerunning the value of the call and the value of the delta for different uh, asset prices. So we go to the data tab, what if anal analysis, data table, is it column or a row? It's a column. What in the original parameter inputs are we changing here? We're changing the 100 because these represent different S values, different values for the underlying asset and we get the estimate and we could uh, okay we could set up a parallel so just for purposes of graphing we could set up a parallel so just equals whatever's here and just pull it across and then pull it down and we could uh, get rid of these 
and rid of this and we could just say call and delta and just graph together and see what comes out so let's insert scatter okay so we have the value black shoulds call so black shoulds parabola and then we have this delta and we can't really see the range of values here so if we just take out if we select edit and remove the call then the axis rescales here and you can see the delta has this type of shape and the question then is how do we interpret this shape right so okay one let, one way of offering an interpretation here is to go to back to uh, the definition. So definition of delta is the change in the value of the call with respect to change in the value of the underlying asset. So the change in the value of the option with respect to change in the value of the stock. In other words, if we change the stock by a given magnitude, what's the impact on the value of the call? Okay, so uh, if we go back into the spreadsheets, okay, we can take out these values here for a second, just delete. The value, the delta, if you like, is equal to one way of thinking about this is it's equal to delta s i'll go capital s the change in s divided by delta c or the other way around the change in the value of the call with respect to a change in the value of s so if we were think, thinking of it as a differential it would be the change in the value of the call with respect to change in the value of the stock Okay, and numerically, if we thought of this delta here is driven by this value here, which in turn is, if you think of the delta for the call, is basically this function. What is this function? This function is the same as, it's driven by If you like, the way we estimate delta from the VBA is E negative QT and D1. Okay, but we're going to generate uh, a numerical. So if this delta is the analytic delta, in other words, E negative QT and D1, we could also generate a numerical delta and we do it more simply by just saying okay centered around 20 what is the change in the value of the option so the, the option the higher value of the option minus the lower value of the option so the change in the option value divided by the change in the stock price and the stock price the higher value of the stock minus the lower value of the stock okay now these values not exactly the same but they're not far off both are very close to zero and we can pull these down and go to this second last cell and Again, if we if you just make the comparison, they are relatively close. So if we like this numerical delta, this numerical delta, very, very close to the analytic delta. This is driven by E negative QT and D1, whereas this is just given as the rate of change. Okay, so let's just to compare. We could insert a scatter 
and we could right click and select data and add and analytic delta we're using this range of 20 to second last and the analytic what's the y values here so 20 all the way to second last like that here that's the analytic delta and then we're going to add the numerical delta and again the x series is in fact we're starting from 20 and we're taking this range here and it's the second last one as well oops so the x values 20 190 and the y values it's this range of values here second last one okay and obviously i have just put in the wrong range so try that again analytic delta edit is 2090 and here 20 and this is fine and then numerical delta edit aha it's so it should be from here So let's look at this again, it's just this range of values here. Okay, and you can see uh, just just graphically both the analytic data and the numerical delta here are virtually the same. And uh, it helps in our interpretation of what delta means. Delta is the rate of change in the value of the option for a given change in the stock price. So if we take the analytical uh, the numerical delta if we take the higher value of the call minus the lower value of the call and divide by the change in the value of the stock prices it produces a delta value which is relatively low it's somewhere down here at 10 it's tiny and as we keep increasing as we go along centered around 90 here th that change is 0 0.42955 and the analytic delta is 0 0.4298 so quite similar likewise similar 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 okay and we could actually make them much closer if i squeezed if i had made if i had taken this to be uh just for sake of argument nine 19.99 in fact this is probably not a let's undo that if i took this cell to be 69 69.99 and went to sell above 80.01 in other words very small change there are 70 point zero one you can see that when we center it around 70 the value here is getting much closer to the analytical so we make when we make the change very small when we make the rate of change tiny so 0 0.1 uh, so uh, one cent lower one cent higher then the uh, numerical delta converges closer and closer to the analytical delta okay uh, so let's change this back to 60 and change this back to 80 okay and we get 60 70 80 uh, small difference uh, but still a difference not enormous but when we make the this the change 69 69.99 and 70.01 then a lot of that difference disappears okay so 60 70 80